Now it's time to introduce a little chaos. With this module, what we're going to do is discuss the idea of random values. In many, so many pieces of software, uh, the idea of random number generation is used frequently. Anytime you want some form of unpredictability, especially in the world of gaming, um, gambling, and anything like that. If you're creating a simple card game, you want the deck to be shuffled. Well, the way to simulate that shuffled deck is through a random number generator, which randomly selects one of the 52 cards in the deck every time you draw a card. Of course, that's not the only thing you might use it for. In um, games where you have characters, uh, you have NPC characters, non-player characters in your game, they may make random choices to go left or right or some other direction. It's all uh, usable depending on what the software is. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how we can generate a random number in our programs. Now, how you use that random number is up to you. But for now, we're just worried about how to do it. So when we're doing random number generation, I already discussed the fact that the math library has the math.random functionality. We are going to ignore that for now. Yes, it does work, and it will give you roughly the same idea of what we're about to discuss, but it doesn't do as good of a job. And um, this is a much better path to take. It does take a little bit of setup, but once you have it set up, the idea is that you can reuse the bulk of it to generate as many random numbers in your program as you want. All right, so for example, the example we're going to do at the end is we're going to do the generation for a lot of 649 numbers. So uh, just to get through this. Now, uh, first up, step one, we need to import a new library, a library of functionality that somebody else has created for us. And that library, of course, is called the random library. So at the top of our programs, we're just going to type import java.util.random, capital R. And that's our first step. We have our library now. We're now able to use it. Step number two, we need to, use, we need to create a variable to take advantage of that library. The variable is going to be uh, an object, and the object's type is going to be random. Now, because it is an object, that means that it has both data or attributes as well as functionality or behaviors that it can perform. And we're going to take advantage of uh, one of those pieces of functionality. So first up, we're going to create this variable as a global variable. The reason why we're creating it as a global variable is because we want to be able to use it everywhere in our program for the entire life of our program. So by creating it global, that means we have complete access to it everywhere and anywhere. If we'd created it local inside of main, if we wanted to use it in another code block elsewhere, once we created one of those, we wouldn't be able to. We would have to create a brand new one. You'd find that the random number generation isn't as random as you'd like it to be if you do that. So we're going to create one of these variables, static, random. Now I'm using the keyword static because it is a global variable. It's outside of the main. And I'm going to use the name RNG. Anybody that plays games will tell you that stands for random number generator equals new random. We're not going to get into a lot of detail on how to define a how to define an object variable, but suffice it, today, suffice it to say this is it. All right, so we've created a new variable called RNG of type random. All right, that's step two. That's the hard part. We've now created the stuff that is reusable. Next, we're going to do the stuff that's specific to whenever we want to generate a number. Now, the functionality that we're going to create um, it's going to produce a float value, so a, a decimal value. So I'm going to create a variable to hold the result of that random number generator. So it's going to be of type float, float num. Keep it very simple. Short for number, of course. Now, in order to actually generate that number, all I have to do is say num is equal to rng. Now, there's my object. As soon as I hit the dot, it's going to show me options. What I want is that top one there. Next, float. What that's going to do is it's going to give me a random number from 0 to 1. Wait a second. What number from 0 to 1? There is no numbers from 0 to 1. Of course there is. All the decimal values in between. So just to show you this, I am going to display this on the screen, system.out.println, and we're going to run it a few times just so you can see uh, the actual random generation here. So if I run it, we get 0 .001638. Let's run it again. Get it. 0.37. Run it every time, we get a completely different value each time. So you can see that sometimes it has more decimal places than other times. Uh, more, more values after the decimal place, I should say. So we are truly getting a random number. Now, how useful is that? 
Well, that depends on what you're doing with that number. So for example, if you were trying to set some odds up and you want to say 50% of the time, or let's say 40% of the time, one action is going to occur versus another action. If that number comes up and is 0.4 or less, then that's 40% of the time. If it's above 0.4, then that's the other 60%. So you could use it like that. That'd be one strategy. Of course, there's you, you may want something more specific. Now, the example I mentioned to you before was drawing a number between 6 and 49 for the lot of 649. But we can't do that. We can only get a number between 0 and 1. Hmm. Well, there's got to be a way. Of course there's a way. Let's figure out how to do that. So let's step through this. So I'm going to kind of clear out this data. I'm going to clear out all the stuff that we have here. I'll leave the system out of a different line so we can use that afterwards. But instead of creating a float to hold my results, I don't want floats. I want an integer because the lotto doesn't do doesn't deal with decimal places. So the lotto is going to deal with integers. So I'm going to create a variable called int lotto num. In fact, I'll do two of these. So we're going to have lotto num and we're going to have int lotto num2. Right. Normally, they they actually draw much more than two numbers, but for our purposes, we're just doing a demo, so we're just going to do two numbers. So once I've defined these two variables, this is where I'm going to hold my random values, but that's not all I need. I also need to know my range. So I'm doing lotto 649, which is numbers between uh, 6 and 49. I think that's right, but I'm not positive. Um, anyways. So our, we want a range, so a low value and a high value. So int range low. And our low value is, of course, 6. And we're going to do another one, int range high. And that one is 49. Good. So what we've done here is we've created a range. Now I'm going to write um, a really ugly looking piece of code, and I'll explain how it actually works once I've written it out so it's a little bit more clear. So we're generating a random number. So I'm going to store that random number into log num. And I'm going to assign it the result of an ugly, ugly mess. Whatever it is, it needs to be an integer. And I know when I get random numbers, they're floats. So I'm going to cast it to an integer, which means I am going to lose my decimal places. So I got to be conscious of that. So now the next piece of the puzzle is I need to generate my random number, rng dot next int, or next float, sorry. So I have my next float. Now, how do I make it within the proper range? Now, that's what the rest of this whole discussion is going to do. So I'm just going to write it out so you can actually see it, and then I'll discuss where this comes from. So I'm going to say multiply by range high minus range low. And at the very end, I'm going to add on range low. I'll close off my brackets. And somewhere I have... Mistake, am I, do I have an extra bracket here? Let's see, we have our opening bracket. Uh, I think we have an extra bracket here. We have our rng.next float. Why is that not working? Oh, I see. We're missing a bracket right here. So the int is going to, the int cast is going to apply to this entire thing, including the final addition at the very end. If we didn't, then it would only apply to part of it, and that wouldn't solve our problem. Okay, so let me explain what's happening in steps. Now, this follows bedness, which means it works from inside out, doing brackets first. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to evaluate range high minus range low. Well, that's 49 minus 6. That gives us 43. Okay, so that means that it is going to be um, whatever this value is, Let's say it's this one down here, 0 0.5867088, multiplied by 43. Now think about this logically. What that really means is if it were a perfect 1 and we multiply it by 43, that means it would be 43. That would be the maximum number we could possibly get. If it were a 0 and we multiplied it by 43, we would get 0. So at this point, the minimum number we can get is 0. All right, well, that means that our number range is actually 0 to 43. So it's 6 shy of what they should actually be doing. So what we need to do now is we need to um, adjust for that. So 
that's what this final addition of the 6 on. So whatever we get, this number from 0 to 43, we're just going to add 6 on it, and that will ensure that we get from 6 to 49, because 0 plus 6 is 6, and 43 plus 6 is 49, and that results in our final value. Now, of course, we're not outputting num, we're going to put output lotto num. Now that I think about it, I don't think the 649 actually starts at 6, but that doesn't really matter for our demo. So if we run this, run it again, we get 45. Let's run it again. 30, 43, 9, 19. So we're never getting a bad number. You can see we're getting numbers all over the range. Let's do a second number. So to generate the second lotto num, I'm literally copy and pasting and just changing the holder variable. The line of code isn't changing at all. We're still using the same value. We're still using the same random number generator. And we're going to display both numbers this time. So this time, I'm going to concatenate and put a comma here and add on uh, lotto num2 so we can see both values. And we run it. We get 19 and 14, 11 and 24, 7 and 26, 29 and 20. We could do this all day. We're going to get different numbers all the time. Now, that being said, this doesn't take into account that it's possible we could get the same number twice. In the real 649, you can't actually do that because they're all actually distinct balls. But that's not really what we're going for at this point. So what you've seen so far is that um, we have the ability to do, use this new random object. We can generate new random numbers, and we can specify a high and low range for it, which is going to be super useful for your future software. That's it for now.